Today, you get to be architects of your own energy model. In this challenge, you're going to be generating energy using concepts from engineering, physics, design, and much more. Hello, my name is Isha and I'm a fourth year Bachelor of Science and Bachelor of Economics double degree student at the ANU. Today we are in the second year physics lab and we're gonna work on something really exciting. Today we'll be making a wind turbine. Um, and as you can see, there's very few things here because that's all you need. Wind turbines are becoming increasingly important as people are looking at renewables as a more important source of energy as people are trying to diversify away from our current sources. It's quite easy to make because all you need is right here. I look forward to seeing what you've made. Thanks for watching, bye. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so today I'm gonna walk you through it, how awesome. So the first thing you'll need is some sort of paper cup to act as your rotor or your propeller, which is the main thing that you can see here. Then next you'll need um, an axle, which will be either um, like a paper straw or a wooden skewer. Um, you will need both. Um, then we have a tube to act as your base. You will need some string, a weight, a pair of scissors, masking tape, and some blue tack. Might not need the blue tack, but it might help. You might be wondering why we need the string and the weight, and that's because today we're not only gonna make a wind turbine, we're gonna see how the wind turbine works and how it actually has potential energy. So first things first, um, and this is my favorite part because it's the easiest, we're gonna take a piece of paper cup and cut it. We're just gonna take it and make incisions down the side of it. And now, while you're cutting, you might be wondering, how many cuts do I make? How, how big should my cuts be? And those are all very valid questions. And now's a good time to take a moment to think about it. How many cuts should you be making? How deep do you think you should be cutting? And does it make a difference? So the first thing is how long they are. So the longer the blades, the more they catch the wind and are able to sort of act more effectively. However, think about like a real life windmill. There's a limit to how long you can make it because you'll need more resources. Making it thicker, making each cut wider gives you a fewer number of blades. A fewer number of blades can be good for flow speed. However, um, a larger number of blades can be really good for increasing torque. Now, once you're done cutting, it should look something like this, nice and frilly. Now the next thing is that we have to angle these because the blades in a wind turbine are slightly angled. So when the blade is flat, the wind sort of hits it and goes down. However, when the, it's angled, it allows for the wind to continue to be moving. And so it continuously flows and that's what allows the wind turbine to move. Hence, it's important for them to be angled. But obviously you don't want them to be so angled that they start blocking each other. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do now is we're gonna make the axle. So the axle is gonna be made with and first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna try and poke a hole in the base of this cup. So we're gonna take it and poke a little hole into the base. If it's not going through with the skewer, you can always use your pair of scissors. The next thing we're gonna to do to make it look a bit like this, and I will take this out to show it to you, is we're going to add some straws there to give it a bit of support and make the axle stronger. This is to give it more weight so that the stick doesn't just fall in and out and it's actually held together there by the tape because as you can imagine, it might be kind of hard to tape just the pointy end of it to the cup. More cutting. Keep in mind, you do want them to be roughly equal length and you want to cut it such that it is smaller than the diameter of the circle. We're also gonna poke a hole through the straws now. And now we're gonna take a little pierced cup, take the straws and put the stick through it. Remember that while you are poking the wooden skewer through the straws, to be careful. Don't accidentally hurt your fingers and when in doubt, ask an adult to help you. So you take one like that and then we take the other one from the top. And just to ensure that it all stays, we're not gonna just tape that. And there you have it. Kinda looks like a bouquet of flowers. Now that we have our little rotor and axle, we're now gonna make the base that it stands on. We're gonna use the little paper cup. We might add some more cups to give it more weight like this. And you can use any other sort of container, anything that might be heavier to act as the base. So now we're gonna take our little tube and we're gonna attach it to the top. To do so first, we're gonna pierce another hole through this. Again, remember to ask any adults if, if you're worried. And now we have our base. You don't have to put the straw in, but putting the straw in can give it that extra stability and weight. 
since it is, after all, just a toilet paper tube and it's quite lightweight. Now we're just going to tape the base together so that it holds. Now we're going to see how the wind turbine actually works and how it actually helps us create or unlock energy. The way we're going to do this is we're going to take a piece of string and a little weight. What you're going to do is you're going to take it and tie it to the back of the wooden skewer. Make sure it's not nice and tight right there. As you can see, now we're going to blow wind onto it. And what you're seeing is that the weight is being lifted up at the back. And this is happening because the potential energy is getting unlocked and the energy is transferring from this wind that we're providing up into the back where it's able to lift the object that it was tied to. You could also, to experiment further, try it with heavier objects and see to what extent is your wind turbine able to lift the objects. So you have now created energy with this turbine. If you want to measure the energy you've made, you can actually attach a little electric motor at the end of this and then use an ammeter or a voltmeter to see the electricity that is generated by the rotor. And you can actually measure it. How cool is that? Well, thank you for watching and I hope you learned something.